Act Two. The same. Early morning. Sarah is washing her face in an old bucket, then plaits her hair. Michael is tidying himself also. Mary Byrne is asleep against the ditch. Sarah, go over now to the bundle beyond, and you'll find a kind of red handkerchief to put upon your neck, and a green one for myself. Michael, getting them. You're after spending more money on the like of them. Well, it's a power we're losing this time, and we not gaining a ting at all. With the handkerchiefs. Is it them too? It is, Michael. She takes one of them. Let you tackle that one round under your chin, and let you not forget to take your hat from your head when we go into the church. I asked Biddy Flynn below, that's after Mary and her second man, and she told me it's the like that they do. Mary yawns and turns over in her sleep. Sarah, with anxiety. There she is waking up on us. And I thinking we'd have a job done before she know it at all. She'll be crying out now, and making game of us and saying it's fools we are, surely. I'll send her to sleep again. Or get her out of it one way or another, for it'll be a bad case to have a devil score the like of her turning the priest against us maybe with her godless talk. Mary, waking up and looking at them curiously, blandly. That's a fine thing you have on you, Sarah Casey. It's a great stir you're making this day, washing your face. I'm not used to the hammer. I wouldn't hear it at all, but washing is a rare thing. And you're after waking me up and I having a great sleep in the sun. She looks around cautiously at the bundle in which she has hidden the bottles. Sarah, coaxingly. Let you stretch out again for sleep, Mary Byrne. For it's a middling time yet before we go to the fair. Mary, with suspicion. That's a sweet tongue you have, Sarah Casey. But if sleep's a grand thing, it's a grand thing to be waking up the day the like of this. When there's a warm sun in it and a kind air. And you'll hear the cuckoo singing and crying out on the top of the hills. If it's that gay you are, you'd have the right to walk down and see you get a few halfpence from the rich men do be driving early to the fair. When the rich men do be driving early, it's queer tempers they have, the Lord forgive them. The way it's little, but bad words and swearing out you get from them all. Sarah losing her temper and breaking out fiercely. Then if you neither beg nor sleep, let you walk out from this place where you're not wanted, and not have us waiting for you maybe at the turn of day. Mary, turning to Michael. God help our spirits, Michael. There she is again, rousing cranky from the break of dawn. Wasn't she a terror since the moon did change? She gets up slowly. And I'd best be going forward to sell the gallon can. She goes over and takes up the bundle. Sarah, crying out angrily, Leave that down, Maryburn. Oh, aren't you the scorn of woman to think you'd have the droth and ruggery on yet that you go drink at the can and the dew not dried from the grass? Mary, in a feigned tone of pacification, with a bundle still in her hand. It's not droth, but a heartburn I have this day, Sarah Casey. So I'm going down to cool my gullet at the blessed well, and I'll sell the can to the parson's daughter below. A harmless poor creature would fill your hand with shillings for a brace of lies. Leave down the tin can, Maryburn, for I had the droth upon your tongue today. There's not a drink house from this place to the fair, Sarah Casey. The way you'll find me below with the full price and not a farthing gone. She turns to go off left. Sarah jumping up and picking up the hammer threateningly. Put down that can, I'm saying. Mary looking at her for a moment in terror and putting down the bundle in the ditch. Is there even mad you're going, Sarah Casey? And you the pride of woman to destroy the world? Sarah going up to her and giving her a push off left. I'll show you if it's raven mad I am. Go on from this place, I'm saying, and be wary now. Mary, turning back after her. If I go, I'll be telling old and young that a weathered heathen savage, said a Casey. The one did put down a head, the parson's cabbage to boil in the pot with their clothes. The priest comes in behind her on the left and listens. And quench the flaming candles on the throne of God the time your shadow fell within the pillars of the chapel door. Sarah turns on her, and she springs round nearly into the priest's arms. When she sees him, she claps her shawl over her mouth and goes up towards the ditch, laughing to herself. Priest, going to Sarah, half terrified at the language that he has heard. Well, aren't you a fearful lot? I'm thinking it's only humbug you were making at the fall of night, and you wouldn't need me at all. Sarah, with anger still in her voice. Humbug it is! Would you be turning back upon your spoken promise in the face of God? I'm thinking you were never christened, Sarah Casey. And it would be a queer job to go dealing Christian sacraments unto the like of you persuasively feeling in his pocket. So it would be best, maybe, I'd give you a shilling for to drink my health and let you walk on and not trouble me at all. That's your talking, is it? If you don't stand to your spoken word, Holy Father, I'll make my own complaint to the mitred bishop in the face of it all. You do that, I would surely, Holy Father, if I walked to the city of Dublin with blood and blister on my naked feet. I wish this day was done, Sarah Casey. 
but I'm thinking it's a risky thing getting mixed in any matters with the like of you. Be hasty, then, and you'll have us done with before you think of it all. Well, maybe it's right you are. And let you come up to the chapel when you see me looking from the door. He goes up to the chapel. We will go preserve your holy father. Mary, coming down to them. Going to the chapel? It's at marriage you're fooling again, maybe. Sarah turns her back on her. It was for that you were washing your face. And you were after sending me for the portrait at the fall of night the way I drink a good half from the jug. Going round in front of Sarah. Is it at marriage you're fooling again? It is, Mary Byrne. I'll be married now in a short while, and from this day there will no one have a right to call me a dirty name and I selling cans in Wicklow or Wexford or the city of Dublin itself. And it's yourself as when her, Michael Byrne. It is, God spare us. <laughs> well, she's a tight, hearty girl, and that's no lie. But I never knew to this day it was a black-born fool I had for a son. You'll breed asses, I've heard them say, and poaching dogs and horses go lick to the wind. But it's a hard thing God help me to breed sense in the sun. If I didn't marry her, she'd be walking off to Jaunton Jim, maybe at the fall of night. And as well yourself knows that there isn't the like of her for getting money and selling songs to the men. And you're thinking it's paying gold to his reverence would make a woman stop when she's a mind to go? Sarah. Let you not be destroying us with your talk when I have a good right to a decent marriage and a speckled female does be sleeping in the black hovels above would choke a mule. Mary, soothingly. <laughs> it's as good a right you have, surely, Sarah Casey. But what good will it do? Is it putting the ring on your finger will keep you from getting an aged woman and losing the fine face you have? Or be easing your pains when it's the grand ladies do be married in silk dresses with rings of gold that do pass any woman with their share of torment in the hour of birth, and do be paying the doctors in the city of Dublin a great price at the time, the like of which you pay for a good ass in a cart? Sarah. Is that the truth? Mary, pleased with the point she has made. Wouldn't any know it's the truth? And it's a few short years yet you are on the world, Sarah Casey, and it's little or nothing at all that you know about it. Sarah, vehement but uneasy. What is it yourself knows of the fine leaves when they wouldn't let the like of you go near them at all? If you do be drinking a little sup in one town or another town, it's soon you get great knowledge and a great sight into the world. You'll see men there, and women there sitting up on the ends of barrels in the dark night, and they making a great talk would soon have the like of you, Sarah Casey, as wise as a March hare. Michael to Sarah. That's a truce, she's saying. And maybe if you've sensed you at all, you'd have the right still to leave it full in, and not be wasting our gold. If it's wise or fool I am, I've made a good bargain and I'll stand to it now. What is he making you give? The ten shillings in gold and the tin can is above tied in the sack. Mary, looking at the bundle with surprise and dread. But, but, but if gold and the tin can, is it? The half sovereign and the gallon can. Mary, scrambling to her feet quickly. Well, I'll be walking off the road to the fair the way you won't be destroying me too fast on the hills. She goes a few steps towards the left, then turns and speaks to Sarah very persuasively. Let you not take the can from the sack, Sarah Casey, for the people is coming above would be making game of you, and pointing their fingers if they see you do the like of that. Let you leave it safe in the bag, I'm saying, Sarah, darling. It's that way will be best. She goes towards left and pauses for a moment, looking about her with embarrassment. What ails her at all? It's real wicked she does be when you hear her speaking as easy as that. Mary to herself. I'd be safer in the chapel, I'm thinking. For if she caught me after on the road, maybe she would kill me then. She comes hobbling back towards the right. Sarah, where is it you're going? It isn't that way we'll be walking to the fair. I'm going up to the chapel to give you my blessing and hear the priest saying his prayers. It's a lonesome road as when I'm blown in Grenany, and a woman will never know the things might happen to her and she walking single in a lonesome place. As she reaches the chapel gate, the priest comes to it in his surplice. Priest crying out, Come along now! Is it the whole day you'd keep me here saying my prayers and I get in my death with not a bit of my stomach and my breakfast in ruins and the Lord Bishop maybe drive it on the road today? We're coming now, Holy Father. Give me the bit of gold into my hand. It's here, Holy Father. She gives it to him. Michael takes the bundle from the ditch and brings it over, standing a little behind Sarah. He feels the bundle and looks at Mary with a meaning look. Priest looking at the gold. It's a good one I'm taking wherever you got it. And where's the can? Sarah, taking the bundle. We have it here in a bit of clean sack, your reverence. We tied it up in the inside to keep it from rusting on the dews of night. And let you not open it now, or you'll have people making game of us and telling stories on us east and west in the butt of the hills. Priest, taking the bundle. Give it here into my hand, Sarah Casey. What is it any persons would think of a tinker making a can? 
He begins opening the bundle. It's it's fine can, your reverence, for it's... If it's poor, simple people we are, it's fine cans we can make, and himself, God help him, is a great man, surely at the trade. Priest opens the bundle. The three empty bottles fall out. Glory to the saints of joy. Did ever a man see the like of that? To think you'd be putting deceit on me, and telling me lies, and I going to marry you for a little sum wouldn't marry a child? Sir, crestfallen and astonished. It's the devil did it, your reverence. And I wouldn't tell you a lie. May the Lord God Almighty strike me dead if the devil isn't after hooshing the tin can from the bag. Priest, vehemently. Go along now, and don't be sweating your lies. Go along now and let you not be thinking I'm a big fool to believe the like of that when it's after selling it you are making a swap for a drink of it maybe in the darkness of the night. Mary, in a peacemaking voice, putting her hand on the priest's left arm. She wouldn't do the like of that, your reverence, when she hasn't a decent standing draught on her at all. And she's sitting great store on a marriage the way you'd have a right to be taking her easy and not minding the can. What differ would an empty can make with a fine, rich, hardy man the like of you? Sarah imploringly. Marry us, your reverence, for the ten shillings in gold, and we'll make you a grand can in the evening. A can will be fine to carry water for the holy man of God. Marry us now, and I'll be saying fine prayers for your morning and night. If it'd be rain in itself, and it'd be two black pools, I'd be setting my knees. Priest. It's a wicked, thieving, lying, scheming lot you are, the pack of you. Let you walk off now and take every stinking rag you have there from the ditch. Mary, putting her shawl over her head. Mary, I, your reverence, for the love of God, for the be queer doings below if you send her off the like of that, and she's swearing crazy on the road. Sarah, angrily. It's the truth she's saying. For it's herself I'm thinking it's after swept the tin can for a pint the time she was raging mad with the draught, and ourselves above walking the hill. Have you no shame, Sarah Casey, to tell lies unto the holy man? Sarah to Mary, working herself into a rage. It's making game of me you'd be, and putting a fool's head on me in the face of the world. But if you're thinking it'd be a mighty cute walking off or going up and hiding in the church, I've got you this time, and you'll not run from me now. She seizes up on one of the bottles. Mary, hiding behind the priest. Keep her off, your reverence. Keep her off from the love of Almighty God. What does the bishop say if he found me here lying with my head broken across, or the two of you is maybe digging a bloody grave for me at the door of the church? Priest waving Sarah off. Go along, Sarah Casey. Would you be doing murder at my feet? Go along for me now. I wasn't I a big fool to have to do with you when it's nothing but distraction and torment I get from the kindness of my heart? Sarah, shouting, I've met a power of strong lads east and west through the world, and are you thinking I'd turn back from a priest? Leave the road now, or maybe I would strike yourself. You would not, Sarah Casey. I've no fear for the lot of you, but let you walk off, I'm saying, and not be coming here, you have no business in screeching tumult and murder at the doorway of the church. Sarah, I'll not go a step till I have her head broke, or till I'm wed with himself. If you want to get shot of us, let you marry us now, for I'm thinking that ten shillings in gold is a good price for the like of you, and you near burst with the fat. I wouldn't have you coming in on me and signing my church, but there's nothing at all I'm thinking would keep the like of you from hell. He throws down the ten shillings on the ground. Gather up your gold now, and be gone from my sight. But if ever I set an eye on you again, you'll hear me telling the peelers who is the stole the black ass belonging to Philly O'Cullen, and whose hay it is on the grey ass does be eaten. You'd do that. I would, surely. If you do, you'll be getting all the tinkers from Wicklow to Wexford and the county Meath to put a block tin in the place of glass to shield your windows where you do be looking out and blinking at the girls. It's hard set you'll be at the time, I'm telling you, to fill the depth of your belly the long days of Lent, for we wouldn't have laying pullet in your yard at all. Priest losing his temper finally. Go on now, or I'll send the lords of justice a dated story of your villainies, burning, stealing, robbing, raping in the mortal day. Go on now, I'm saying, if you run from Kilmanham or the rope itself. Michael taking off his coat. <laughs> Is it run from the like of you, Holy Father? Go up to your own shanty, or I'll beat you with the asses the reins till the world would hear you roaring from this place to the coast of Clare. Is it left your hand upon myself and the Lord would blight your members if you'd touch me now? Go on from this. He gives him a shove. Blight me, is it? Take it then, your reverence, and God help you so. He runs at him with the reins. Priest runs up to ditch, crying out, There are peelers passing by the grace of God. Hey, below! Mary, clapping her hand over his mouth. Knock him down on the road. They didn't hear him at all. Michael pulls him down. Gag his jaws. Stuff the sacking in his teeth. They gag him with the sack that had the can in it. 
Tie the bag around his head, and if the Peters come, we'll put him on headfirst into the bog hollers beyond the ditch. They tie him up in some sacking. Michael to Mary. Keep him quiet, and the rags tight on him for fear he'd screech. He goes back to their camp. Hurry with the things, Sarah Casey. The Peelers aren't coming this way, and maybe we'll get off from them now. They bundle the things together in a wild haste. The priest wriggling and struggling around on the ground, with old Mary trying to keep him quiet. Mary patting his head. Be quiet, your reverence. What is it ails here with your wrigglings now? Is it choking, maybe? She puts her hand under the sack and feels his mouth, patting him on the back. It's only letting on, your holy father, for your nose is blowing back and forward as easy as an east wind on an April day, in a soothing voice. There now, father. Let you stay easy, I'm telling you, and learn a little sense and patience the way you'll not be going airy again and going to rob poor sinners of their scraps of gold. He gets quieter. That's a good boy you are now, your reverence. And let you not be uneasy, for we wouldn't hurt you at all. It's sick and sorry we are to tease you, but what did you want meddling with the like of us, when it's a long time we are going our own ways, father and son and his own son after him, or mother and daughter and our own daughter again? And it's little me we ever had of going into a church and swearing, I'm told they're swearing in it, a word no man would believe. Or with drawing rings on our fingers, we'll be cutting our skins maybe when we be taking the ass from the shafts and pulling the straps the time to be sleepy with going around beneath the heavens and the rains falling. Michael, who has finished bundling up the things, comes over with Sarah. We're fixed now, and I've a mind to run him into the bog hole the whale and not be tattling to the peelers of our games today. If I write too, I'm thinking, let you not be rough with him, Sarah Casey, and he after drinking his sup of porter with us at the fallen light. Maybe he'd swear a mighty oath he wouldn't harm us, and then we'd be safe or lose him. For if we went to drown him, they'd maybe hang the batch of us, man and child and woman, and the ass itself. What would he care for an oath? Don't you know his like to live in the terror of the wrath of God? Putting her mouth to the priest's ear in the sacking. Would you swear an oath, Holy Father, to leave us in your freedom and not talk at all? Priest nods in sacking. Didn't I tell you? Look at the poor fellow knotting his head off the bias of the sacks. Strip them off of him, and he'll be easy now. Michael, as speaking to a horse. Hold up, Holy Father. He pulls the sacking off and shows the priest with his hair on the end. They free his mouth. Hold him till he swears. I, I, I swear, surely. If you let me go in peace, I'll not inform against you or say anything at all. And may God forgive me for giving heed unto you like this day. Sarah puts the ring on her finger. There's the ring, Holy Father to keep your mind in of your oath until the end of time. For my heart's scalded with your fooling, and it'll be a long day till I go making talk of marriage or the like of that. Mary complacently standing up slowly. She's vexed now, your reverence, and let you not mind her at all, for she's right, surely. And it's little need we ever had of the like of you to get us our bit to eat and our bit to drink in our time of love when we were young men and women and were fine to look at. Hurry on now. He's a great man to have kept us full in our gold. And we'll have a great time drinking that bit with the trampers on the green of clash. They gather up their things. The priest stands up. The priest, lifting up his hand. I have sworn not to call the hand of man upon your crimes today. But I haven't sworn I wouldn't call the fire of heaven from the hand of almighty God! He begins saying a Latin malediction in a loud ecclesiastical voice. (laughs) There's an old villain! Run! Run! Run for your lives! They rush out, leaving the priest the master of the situation. Curtain. And that is the end of J.M. Singh's A Tinker's Wedding, a comedy in two acts. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy listening to me rant and rave in various voices. I hope to continue reading some more of J.M. Singh. I have about three more plays in this particular collection that I can read to you. So until then, I hope you consider subscribing, following, whatever ing on whatever social media you're doing. Uh, I'm also on Spotify. I write classical music, so if you want to go and follow me there as well, I'd be very much appreciated. If you have any plays that you would like me to read, or have any plays that you've written yourself that you would like read, email me always at bemuseartsinc at gmail.com. That's B-E-M-U-S-E-A-R-T-S-I-N-C at gmail.com. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. And I hope to have you back in Brenda Moyer's Playwright Corner. Thank you.